，红酒世界越懂越喜欢。大家好，我是高级编辑卢伊萨，很高兴通过直播间再次跟大家见面。今天呢，红酒世界迎来了波尔多二级名庄、壁上女爵酒庄的总经理兼酿酒师尼古拉斯·古拉米勒先生。他将为我们介绍这一个优雅的二级名庄及其旗下二零一七年份葡萄酒的情况。Welcome, Mr. Glumino. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here today to introduce Chateau Pichot Lalo and its 2017 complement to our audience. Hello, everyone. I'm very、uh, happy to be here with all of you. I am Nicolas Glumino. I'm 44 years old, and I'm actually the general manager and winemaker of Pichon Longueville Comtesse de Lalande, as known as Pichon Comtesse or Pichon Lalande. It's as you want. So maybe first, let me、uh, talk to you about the history of Pichon Comtesse. Talking about the history of Pichon Comtesse is talking about the history of Bordeaux. Actually, the first vines、uh, of our vineyard. Have been planted during the Middle Age, so centuries ago. At that time, no official brand or label, but more officially, in the mid 17th century, a wine merchant of Bordeaux, Pierre de Rosan, decided to enlarge the size of the vineyard, and he planted a lot of vines on this gravel slope. A few years later, precisely in 1850, his descendant, the Baron de Pichon Longueville, just before dying, he was 90 years old, shared his vineyard in two parts between his two sons, who were Baron by birth, it's Pichon Baron, and it's still today, and his three daughters. And this vineyard was run by one of the three daughters. She married the Comte de Lalande to become the Comtesse de Lalande. Assuming this name and this label of Pichon Longueville, Comtesse de Lalande, her descendant in 1925 decided to sell the winery, and he sold it to the Miai family. The Miai are a family from Bordeaux. It's a very important moment in the history of Pichon Comtesse because the Miai always planted a lot of Merlot in the vineyards that they have owned. That means that a part of the image, part of the reputation of our growth,、um, has been done and drawn, I may say, because of this high proportion of Merlot in our vineyard. We have mostly and mainly Cabernet Sauvignon, but the proportion of Merlot is always a bit higher than the one in the vineyards of our neighbors. The image and the expression of our wine is very specific, meaning that it's a good balance between the strength, the density of a tannic structure due to Cab, and you. Uh, of the fact that we are located in Poyac, in balance with the flesh, the suavity, the silkiness of the wine, which is a lot about the Merlot and which is very Pichon Comtesse. In 2006, this winery has been sold to the Rousseau family. They also own the Champagne Louis Roderer、uh, warehouse. That means that this winery, Pichon Comtesse, has always been owned by a family. It has always been a family business. It's not exactly unique in Bordeaux, but it's very rare to be mentioned. Right now, maybe a few words about the location of our vineyard. As you know, Bordeaux is in the southwest of France, and you have three main. Wine production regions in Bordeaux: the south of Bordeaux with Pessac Léonien, and south of the south, the sweet wines production, Sauternes and Barsac. And you may know that the city of Bordeaux is crossed by the river coming from the mountains to the Atlantic Ocean. On the right bank of this river, you have a lot of clay in the soils. 
that's why we have here planted a lot of Merlot in the past and still today. Two main appellations, Pomerol and Saint-Emilion. On the left bank of the river, from Bordeaux downtown to the Atlantic Ocean, so meaning from south to north, four main appellations, Margaux, Saint-Julien, then Pauillac, and Saint-Estèphe on north. From the south to the north, the more north you drive, the more gravity draining and dry are the soils, and consequently, the more powerful and massive are the wines. Within this organization, the location of Pichon Comtesse is very specific and it's part of its character. Actually, our vineyard is located on the limits between Saint-Julien and Pauillac. That's probably why our wine expresses this very balance between the strength, the structure and the full body expression of wine, which is due to Cab and Pauillac, in balance with the silkiness, the flesh, the powder touch of Pichon Comtesse, which is unique. What is our terroir? What is our soil? We take the benefit of a beautiful gravel soil and of an undersoil, which is composed by clay and sand. It's a very complex soil. On this terroir, we have few different grapes. Cabernet Sauvignon, of course, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot, four grapes. Since Ruderer has bought this estate, we have started a huge replanting program. We own 90 hectares of vine, and we pull out three hectares of vine every year. Those three hectares that we pull out, we let the soil having a rest during two to three years. We switch those plots to fallow plots. And then, three years later, we replant them. This replantation program gives us two opportunities. First, we're going to increase a bit the amount of Cabernet Sauvignon in our vineyard, decreasing a bit also the amount of Merlot to reach, at the end of the day, the following proportions, 65% of Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% of Merlot, 7% of Cabernet Franc, and 3% of Petit Verdot. The other opportunity that is given to us is that we're gonna step by step increase the amount of the vineyard that we grow under biodynamics. Actually, we could try to convert the mature vine planted from sustainable to biodynamics, but actually, I prefer processing step by step, three hectares after three hectares, and starting to grow vine under biodynamics when it's very young, so that means only once it's replanted. The biodynamics is absolutely fascinating. It was not in my original background, but I've learned a lot about it. I said that we increase every year with three new hectares the size of the vineyards grown into biodynamics. It offers us the opportunity to grow slowly, to learn slowly, and to invest year after year a bit more in terms of human resources, in terms of new facilities. The question we have now is to know when will we be 100% under biodynamics. So far, we just want to learn how it works and to understand what is a balance between scientific knowledges and empirism. I mean agriculture, back to earth, having a look on everything around us, the environment, it takes time. And now, a few words about the winemaking at Pichon Comtesse. Actually, we have two labels, Pichon Comtesse and Réserve de la Comtesse. That means that we do a selection between first and second label. 
We do the same job in every plot of the vineyard and I'm used to tell to my technical team, let's do as if we're gonna make 100% of Pichon Comtesse. Once the harvest is done, after four or five weeks, we vinify each plot separately. So we have a lot of different stainless steel conical shaped tank and we vinify 60 different wines. Once the vinification process is done, so that means after the alcoholic fermentation, the maceration, then the malolactic fermentation, we run some blending sessions. The first sessions that we run, we run them completely blind. I just don't want to know where the different wines come from in order to keep realistic and very objective on the quality of each wine without knowing the name of the plot from where the grapes come. The selection of the different wines between what is first or second label quality wine is made on the basis of the balance, of the precision of the tannic structure, of the purity of fruit. Remember, Comtesse is all about the balance between strength and aromatic expression, density and savory and fleshy expression of what is very Pichon Comtesse. After this selection, we can say that we do a proportion of 50-50, half-half Pichon Comtesse and Réserve de la Comtesse. Now the aging. You know that we use barrels to age wine. As for Pichon Comtesse, we only use French oak, naturally, and we use 60% new oak and 40% of one wine oak. As for the aging, it lasts 19 months. It's long enough in order to clear the wine, but very naturally. Everything we do in the cuvery and in the cellar is done in order to respect the balance we have tried to create during the vinification process. So that's why nothing is over something. We try not to over extract the components of the grapes. We don't want to overage the wines. We don't want to add too much hidden tannins to the wine so it's not over oaky. Everything is about the balance in wine. That's probably why the style of Pichon Comtesse is very unique. And centuries after centuries, decades after decade, winemaker after winemaker, we are just part of the history of Pichon Comtesse. So we have to respect this very balance. Now let's talk about 2017 vintage. Just a few words first about the global season. You have maybe heard about this night of April 28th when Bordeaux was hit by the frost. Our friends have lost almost the whole crop in one night. This is not our situation. We lost less than 10% of the crop. But let me tell you something. It's not because some of our grapes have been frozen that the rest of the crop, that means the, the main crop, is not about high quality. 17 is a very good vintage. Actually, except this terrible night of the frost, the rest of the season occurred in perfect condition and key steps of the vegetative cycle occurred in perfect condition of drought, not too high temperatures and just a few drops of rainwater. So everything was fine in order to pick ripe and perfect state of health grapes. Finally, we have made a harvest that lasted from September the 7th to October the 1st, almost four weeks of harvest. That means a lot, four weeks. That means that we could have picked each plot at the perfect state of ripeness, the ripeness of seeds. That's so important in order 
to get some ripe tannins, not over mature, but just balance silky and refined tannins. Finally, we have made what I do consider as a very good vintage. Back in the past, 14 was a very good wine, very classic vintage. 15 was much more about the power, the strength, and a very mineral wine. 16 was outstanding because 16 is in the series of 59, 61, 82 vintages. It's a legendary vintage. As for 17, I think I've rarely made such a precise and balanced wine. This wine that we're still aging in barrel, we will sell it en primeur. Now, in the next following two weeks, that will be an event. Of course, I know that some of you wait for Pichon Comtesse and Reserve de la Comtesse 17 to buy them en primeur. Don't be too impatient, we will release it soon. It's now a few years that our distribution is very dynamic. And I want this dynamism to continue. That means that, obviously, I want my brand to be priced at that level that you can figure out that it is one of the super seconds growth of the Medoc. But on the other hand, I want this brand to be well known, not just because it's a myth, but because people have drunk the wine. So that's why I want to price it very efficiently. Even in terms of marketing and sales, everything is a question of balance. The position of the brand and the reality of a good and a live distribution. I want to tell you a few words about the Emprimeur system, which is very Bordeaux. We are very attached to this system and you can trust we're gonna age it, we're gonna take care of this wine until the bottling and the wines that you buy now, we will deliver it in a few months, but we will take a lot of care of our new baby and we are very happy to offer it to you. This very system of the Emprimeur lasts in Bordeaux for centuries and it has allowed Bordeaux to cross the centuries and sometimes the economical crisis without too many difficulties. So it's a very efficient system and it creates what we call the Place de Bordeaux, which unifies wineries, courtiers and negotiations, wine merchants. Thanks to this team, Bordeaux is very powerful all over the world because we have so many bottles every year to sell that uh, our market uh, is not only a few places in the world, but it's now the global world, the entire world. That's why we have to respect each of us, each of the wineries. We have to respect our ancient and loyal markets, but also the new markets. And Believe me, it's a pleasure to meet people, to explain what is our wine culture, our wine making culture, why we make wine this way, to explain to you that we can mix our cultures and we can try to match our wines with your food, for example, which is not that easy, but let's talk about it. I can tell you that it's always a pleasure to reach a place wherever it is in the world and to share a bottle of wine that we have made few years ago because it's a way to talk to you about um, the creation part of our job from 60 different wines you have to blend a new baby from crush and that's why we have worked so hard on this 2017 to make it balanced, refined, precise and as complex as we can. What impresses me a lot in Hong Kong and in mainland China 
is the average age of the customers. I mean, it's so impressive to see how quickly knowledgeable you have become. And it's obviously very impressive for me, coming from what we call the old world, to come and share with very young people who want to know about our culture, about our wine. So I'm very happy to travel all over the world and to come to Asia, to come to, to Hong Kong, to meet you and to share about wine. But now I want you to come to France, to come to Bordeaux and to visit us at Pichon Comtesse. We will share a few different vintages. We'll do a vertical tasting together. We have now new facilities to show you, new cuberry, new cellar, a new building dedicated to tractors, new offices. Everything is done in order to enlighten Pichon Comtesse, this famous winery, which is that popular all over the world. Pichon Comtesse is very famous. The house is beautiful. And as you can see, the label is a golden label. It's all about the character and the identity of this growth that we really cherish. So now, the last words about 2017, just to let you remember that, uh, take the time to taste it, to drink it. I'm sure you, you will enjoy this wine. We are very pleased about this wine. So uh, I would love to share it with you very soon. And now we're going to try to tell you a few words in your language. Hong Kong Chu Tsi, Hui Dong Hui Si Huang. 我们非常感谢尼古拉斯先生今天来到红酒世界，跟各位介绍毕尚女爵酒庄及其旗下二零一七年份的葡萄酒。那今天我们的直播呢，就时间到此结束了。我们明天再会。